You are listening to Smart Women's Dating Podcast, episode number 23. Welcome to Smart Women's Dating Podcast. I am your host, certified life coach Lærke Nielsen, and I help smart, independent women attract the love they deeply desire without having to chase or settle. This podcast will give you the mindset tools and insights you need to finally crack the code to your love life. Are you ready? Then let's go. Welcome back to the podcast. Today I'm going to talk about something that for most people is really painful. Ghosting. Why is it so painful and why do some people ghost? What's really behind it? And I'll also offer you some mindset tools, some new ways that you can think about ghosting that can help you handle it if you have been ghosted. And if you've been ghosted by someone you dated long enough to really start liking and you're in this phase of still wishing he will come back, then I'm going to give you three questions you can ask yourself to see things more clearly and get yourself out of this suffering. And at the end of the episode, I'm also going to give you some tips on how to make yourself less vulnerable for ghosting. But before I do that, I want to invite you to give me a review if you like this podcast. Go to Apple Podcast and write me a review. And if you want to give me five stars, that would be amazing. Each month, I will offer a free power coaching session of 30 minutes to one of you, and I'll announce the winner here on the podcast. So if you find this podcast valuable and you think other women could benefit from it too, then hop in on Apple Podcast and write a review and let me know why you like it, because that would be super helpful for me too. So what do I even mean when I talk about ghosting? You need, of course, to have established some kind of connection. If someone is not answering you on your first message in a dating app, for instance, it's not ghosting. But someone can ghost you even before you've met them. If, for instance, you have an appointment to meet a man, you have a date, and he never shows up, he never gets back to you with an apology or an explanation, and he doesn't answer your messages or calls. So this can happen even before a date, or it can happen after a few dates, or it can happen after a couple of weeks or even months into a connection. So we are not on a mission to understand the ghoster in order to excuse his behavior because ghosting is basically never okay. The interest in trying to get why this happens is for you to see that it has nothing to do with you and you are better off without. Because ghosting says a lot about the emotional maturity of the person who is ghosting. And when I say that ghosting is never okay, I want to add that in very special exceptions, it could be the only way of getting away from another person. Let's say you were in an abusive relationship, for instance. But that's the one exception where I think ghosting could be justified. Now, most people would agree that ghosting is more painful than being rejected face to face, for instance. But why is that? I try to break it down here and I'm going to give you three reasons. The first one is, it takes a period of time before you know that you're not going to hear from him again, and you're not going to see him again, and you have in fact been ghosted. And this is a time that's full of uncertainty, and most humans don't like uncertainty, it can be very uncomfortable. You don't know if you've been rejected or not, you don't know what's really going on. And what happens when we experience this level of uncertainty is that our brain tries to find all sorts of possible reasons and excuses for why we're not hearing back from someone. And you might find yourself thinking, maybe he lost his phone, maybe something happened to someone in his family or to one of his friends or maybe even to himself. What if he's in the hospital right now? This can be super stressful and you go through all the emotions while waiting for a response that never comes. The second reason it's painful is that you get no explanation as to why he's opting out of the connection just like that. There's an open ending and again, having a human brain, we will always try to find a meaning with things. And I don't know if you noticed, but when there's no explanation, a lot of us automatically make it mean that we fucked it up. We did or said something wrong. It's our fault. Our brain always goes into that direction. So you go through everything that happened in the past couple of weeks or however long you've known the guy and you have a ton of self-doubt and self-blame and a lot of confusion. And you also feel that you get no closure, 
which, by the way, is something you can totally give yourself. You don't need his version of the story. You can just decide that his actions speak for themselves, and he doesn't get a saying besides from that. The third reason is when you finally realize that you're not going to hear from him again, and he is gone, and he didn't go to the hospital, he didn't suffer acute amnesia or lose someone in his family, he might actually be having a great time with his friends or another woman right now. He just didn't bother telling you that. That's when you feel deeply disrespected by him. And, of course, you become angry and frustrated and you have no place to release that anger. You can't express it to him because he's not reading your messages and he's not answering your calls. So those are the three reasons ghosting is particularly painful. There's a time with a high level of uncertainty there's a lack of explanation that leads you into self-doubt and self-blame. And then there's the anger that you cannot deliver at the right address. So why are they ghosting you? And let me just repeat, it's basically never okay regardless of the reason. The only reason you want to get curious and try to understand why is to see that it is not about you. And again, there are three reasons we can look at. First of all, he feels uncomfortable with the idea that is painful for you. He tells himself that he doesn't want to hurt your feelings. But in reality, it's his own feelings that he doesn't want to hurt. He doesn't want to be in front of you in person and experience your reaction to a rejection. So he pretends that if he never says anything, you won't get hurt. And this could even show up in text. He doesn't want to write the text and see your reaction to that. The second reason could be that he doesn't want the situation where you might try to convince him to continue dating. Maybe he has experienced this in the past when he tried to end a dating connection or a relationship. Because if he is already someone who doesn't like uncomfortable conversations, he could have been saying things like, the timing is not right, or I feel overwhelmed, I'm not ready right now, etc. And then experience that the woman convinced him into continued dating because she didn't hear this as a no. This was not a clear no to her. So he might think that this is going to be difficult for him and so he believes it's better to not even say a word about it. And then the third reason. Let's just be honest. He's a jerk. He lacks empathy. He is emotionally immature. He has too many choices. So why even bother? So what does it mean? When someone ghosts you. When you think about it, ghosting is the most extreme form of avoidant behavior. It is completely avoiding a conversation that's painful or difficult. So it is an expression of a lack of emotional maturity. It's as simple as that. Again, it's not something you did. It's 100% his responsibility and his choice to show up like that, or rather not show up at all. Even if you did something that you regret, it is never a justification. Now, what can you do to support yourself and move on if you've been ghosted? First of all, you want to be present with yourself and your emotions. Don't try to push them away. You want to acknowledge that you feel hurt and your feelings are valid. If you push away sadness or disappointment or whatever feeling you have in this situation, you also show your unconscious that you don't have a right to feel this and your experience of being ghosted does not justify feeling sad, which will only diminish your sense of self-worth. So you want to be present with yourself and acknowledge your emotions. And then you want to pay attention to not buy into the thoughts about how this could have been your fault. If you have any of this, then don't believe it. Remind yourself of what is really behind so you can understand that you don't really want him to come back if he's a ghoster. And of course, if you have been dating someone for a while and you are not really sure what's going on and you have these thoughts of wishing he would come back, then here are the three questions I want you to ask yourself. Number one, if he was to come back after having ghosted you once, do you think you would ever be able to trust him? Like if one day he didn't text you back in several hours or he was late for a date or you sensed that something was off, how would that work for you? Number two, knowing that he is a person who would go far to avoid emotionally challenging conversations, how do you think it would be to be in a long-term relationship with him? If he has a very low capacity to tolerate the potential discomfort of having a conversation that might trigger some feelings in him or in you, then what would that mean for the relationship? 
Would there be situations where you would avoid having a talk about something? Or would there be things that were left unsaid? And what would that lack of total openness mean for your well-being inside the relationship? It's not possible to have a long-term relationship without difficult conversations or emotionally challenging situations. The key is not to not have that, it's to be comfortable having that and knowing it's normal and trusting that it's okay. Number three, if he is capable of ghosting you, then what else could he be capable of in the long term? This behavior could show up in other ways as well. If he has this kind of avoidant behavior, he could be hiding things or avoiding to mention things or maybe even lying. He is ghosting you because he doesn't want to feel the uncomfortable feelings himself. Think about this. He is hurting you to avoid hurting himself. Now, is that the kind of partner you want? I know I have really painted the worst consequences up here, but my point is, If someone is capable of ghosting you, I want you to see that you don't want this kind of person in an intimate relationship. So come back to yourself and focus on your values. Don't sink to the ghoster's level. Don't try to reach out and force him to give you an explanation or make him take responsibility. If you dated him for a while, of course you want to make sure that he knows you're trying to reach him and he knows where you stand. But then after that, you gotta let go. It's only giving away your own power and energy for no reason. So remember who you are and your values. How do you want to show up in dating? How do you want to support yourself? And what do you want in a relationship? What kind of partner do you want? So here at the end, I also promise to give you some tips on how to make yourself less vulnerable. And I have two things I would highly recommend. The first one is... Date more than one man at a time until you know them well enough to feel sure that you both want to be exclusive. Like this, you avoid getting too attached early on and you are less vulnerable if one of them all of a sudden decides to stop the connection. Think of this as an investment. You wouldn't put all your money into one and the same investment. You would spread it to different kinds of markets and stocks. So do the same with men, at least in the beginning. This doesn't mean that you sleep with them, you are just getting to know them. Having coffee, going for walks, having dinner, watching a movie or going to an exhibition, whatever you like to do. Secondly, practice what I call slow dating. Don't go on more than one to two dates per week with the same man until you know him really well. Like this, you can see how your feelings for him develop over time and how his feelings develop. And you want to check his reliability over time. Does his words match his actions and do they continue to do that after two or three months? Learning how to evaluate the connection you have with a man so you can see if he's emotionally mature and ready for a commitment and worth your time, that is crucial for creating a healthy relationship and this is something I work with my clients on. And I would love to connect with you if you're considering coaching and want to find out if this is something for you. So if you want to attract your soulmate, your ideal partner or the man of your dreams, whatever you prefer to call him, and you find this podcast valuable, then there's a good chance that you'll also find it valuable to coach with me. So if you're curious to know more about what that would be like, then go to the show notes or go to my website, lærkethelovecoach.com, L-A-E-R-K-E, and click the link and book a call, and then I'll see you soon. Thank you for listening and have a beautiful week and enjoy dating. If you like what you're hearing on this podcast and you want to get support from a coach on your love journey, I invite you to book a free console call with me. You will find the link in the show notes. And also, don't forget to subscribe and I would love it if you would rate and review this podcast and then you'll also help other women find it. 